Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. In the Indian Ocean, off the eastern coast of the island nation of Madagascar, resides an even smaller island nation, that being the country of Mauritius. This tiny island nation has a total area of just over 2,000 square kilometers. However, it has a population of 1.265 million people. This makes it the most densely populated country in Africa. Well, Mayotte is actually more populated. However, that's not an independent nation, but a territory of France, it doesn't quite count. However, don't let this dense population give you the idea that Mauritius is a little more than a tiny rock in the Indian Ocean crammed full of people, as that's really not the case. The nation seems to be thriving in ways many other African nations are not. It's the only African nation to have a very high level of human development, according to the Human Development Index. It was also ranked as the most peaceful African nation a few years back too. It even has things like free public transport for people like students, the elderly and the disabled. And of course, the nation has breathtaking natural beauty, whether that be its natural surroundings or the animal inhabitants of the island. Its most notable animal resident, however, is infamously no longer with us, as Mauritius was the only place in the world in which dodos were found, and we all know what became of them. Despite sounding like a slice of paradise off the coast of Africa, it certainly took a long time to get to that point. Mauritius has had quite the history. Many different nations have laid claim to this small island. Its location in the world and its land good for farming made it desirable by a few different empires. What's interesting however is that these foreign powers like to give the island different names. This has resulted in this tiny island having quite a large selection of titles it has gone by over the years. While it is by no means the only country to have different names in the past, what's so interesting about Mauritius's different names is they somewhat reflect the island's history at that time. The island's history can really be traced through the island's names. We can see this in other parts of the world too. Places like Czechia and it's a long history of different names come to mind and even the democratic Republic of the Congo and its flip-flop between that name and Zaire. So today, let's look into the names and the history of the country of Mauritius. It seems that one of the key reasons as to why this nation has had so many names over the years is because unlike other places that got renamed by foreign empires, there were no native people on this land in the first place who had already given it a name, meaning they can argue to have that name reinstated like we've seen in the past with other parts of the world. For a staggeringly huge amount of time, this little island remained unknown to the larger world and uninhabited. We believe that human interaction on this island most likely started in the Middle Ages, which while it is a long time ago, in the grand scheme of human existence is fairly recent. However, by the Middle Ages, people were not setting up shop there by any means. It would have just been sailors and merchants who stumbled across it on their voyages. It's believed that Arab sailors who were trading with people on the east coast of Africa in the Middle Ages were the first to lay eyes on this island, as well as being the first to give it a name, with the first known name of the island being the Arabic Dina Alobi. The earliest recorded evidence we have of this name it comes from a 1502 world map by Italian cartographer Alberto Cantino. This name is believed to simply mean abandoned island. This makes quite a bit of sense that's for sure. This was a completely uninhabited island, so it's easy to see why sailors would consider it abandoned. It would stay abandoned for quite a bit longer however, though towards the end of the 15th century more European powers was starting to eye up land in the east of Africa and in the Indian Ocean. It was becoming apparent that it would be wise to have a base of operations in this part of the world. By the early 16th century, European claim was underway. It was the Portuguese who first made themselves present in this part of the world, and in turn became the first to apply European name to the island. It was specifically the Portuguese explorer Diogo Fernandes who was considered the first European to set foot on the island. He landed there in 1507, and it was of course in this year that he named it too. He gave the island the name of Ila du Cerne slash Cerne. These names now translate into English to mean either Swan Island or simply just Swan. While you may think he named this island after Swansea spotted there, that actually isn't the case. He named this island after his ship, which was also just called the Swan. Why this ship had this name, however, I'm not too sure. I guess it's just because Swan is a pretty good name for a boat. They both spend a lot of time on water. While this is most likely the reason why it was given this name, one source pointed out that it was named after the birds on the island. Not actual swans, however, but the island's beloved extinct resident of the Dodo, who look nothing like swans now that I think about it, but still. Maybe having an abundance of birds on the island gave Diego more reason to name the island after his avian named ship.
Despite finding it and naming it, the Portuguese never actually settled the island. This is because it didn't really contain anything they were particularly interested in. So instead of setting up shop there, they would use it as something of a pit stop, stopping there to gather some food and water in the middle of their travels. I imagine this is when the Dodo's numbers started to dwindle. It was not specifically Portuguese territory, but everyone kind of agreed that it was their possession. Perhaps the biggest Portuguese impact on the island is in the name not of Mauritius itself, but for this part of the world as a whole. The chain of islands that consists of the modern day nations of Mauritius and the French Overseas Department of Reunion is called the Mascalian Islands. This is in fact a Portuguese name. The name comes from Portuguese explorer Dom Pedro Mascalinas, due to the fact that he explored this part of the world in 1512, just five years after the Portuguese first landed in Mauritius. As mentioned, despite having deep links with the Portuguese, it was never technically their land. This meant anyone could actually turn up and claim it for themselves. And in 1598, that is exactly what happened. It was on the 17th of September of that year in which a fleet of five ships from the Netherlands docked on the island. Like the Portuguese, they wanted land in this part of the world too and use this island. Also like the Portuguese, they used it as a pit stop to rest and refuel on further travels. It wouldn't be until 40 years later in 1638 that the Dutch actually tried to settle and make a permanent residence on the island, which unfortunately didn't seem to work out too well for them, so it stayed as just a pit stop for them all the way until 1710. While it might seem like the Dutch didn't make too much of an impact on the island, they actually did some things. They introduced sugarcane and domestic animals to the island. It was also under their regime where it's believed the poor Dodo finally became extinct. Poor thing never really stood a chance. However, they made another huge impact on the island too, one that is of extreme importance to us. They were the ones who bestowed the name Mauritius onto the island. The Dutch named this island after Maurice, Prince of Orange. He was a stat holder for pretty much the entire Dutch Republic at the time. Without going into the nitty gritty of what the stat holder was and what the Dutch Republic was, I will say he was a pretty big deal at the time, and it makes all the sense in the world as to why Dutch explorers would name an island after him. This means that Mauritius is one of the dozen or so nations to be named after a real person, along the likes of the Philippines and Bolivia. And so, the island got that name on Mauritius that it still has to this very day. Though that's not quite the end of the story, you know I needed to hit that 8 slash 10 minute mark so I could put adverts in the middle of this video. Luckily for myself and for YouTube's advertising system, there's quite a bit more to this story. While the island was given this name in 1598, it wouldn't stick with this name for all that time up until now. As I said, the Dutch actually gave up on Mauritius in 1710. Left abandoned once again, it was five years later when another European power claimed the land. This time the French. They claimed the island in September of 1715. They once again use it as an important pit stop on their ways to India to begin with. However, 20 years later in 1735, they were able to do something neither the Portuguese or Dutch could. They successfully settled the island. Under the watch of the French governor Mahé de la Baudante, many buildings were erected on the island and became something of a shipbuilding hub. What helped with their expansion is the fact that the island of Reunion was nearby and already under their control, making it something of a launching point for the settlement of Mauritius. Of course, the French French ditched that Dutch name of Mauritius and instead called it something a bit more French, though perhaps this name is a bit too French. They simply called it Ile de France, which literally translates into the island of France. As I hinted towards, it's a bit on the nose. While it could have been given this name simply because it was an island that belonged to France, it could have also possibly been named after the Ile de France in actual France, which isn't an actual island but one of its regions which houses the nation's capital, Paris. Perhaps the island was named after this region in O to their homeland. From this land, the French launched several successful raids on British ships. This, however, came to a breaking point in 1810 when the British had had enough and launched its own raid on the island, under instructions to capture it. With its strategic location, ability to grow sugar, and growth in population, Britain had actually been eyeing up the island for some time. These raids gave them a bad enough reason to claim the island. The British military and intelligence they had gathered on the island made easy work of the French. The island changed from French control to British control in 1814 and the British ditched a French name and reinstated the name of Mauritius. Why they didn't give the island a suitably more British name, however, is beyond me. 
Under British rule, the island began to expand and grow even more so. With the abolishment of slavery in 1835, it meant workers were brought over from India. This had an impact that is still seen today with Hinduism being the nation's most popular religion, and the language of Bhojpuri, which comes from India, being pretty widely spoken across the island too. Growth continued and Mauritius under British control started to morph into the nation we know today. They finally achieved independence in 1968, and they decided to stick with that name of Mauritius also much like the British did. I guess people were so fond of this name as it's the name it had for the longest period of time in modern history. It was under Dutch rule of this name for over 100 years, while it was ill de France for just under 100 years. And like I said, that name is really a little bit too on the nose. Also, like I said, the island never had any indigenous names due to never having a native population when first settled by Europeans. We see so many former empire locations revert to native names when they become independent. That just couldn't happen with Mauritius, however, as the native population didn't exist. I guess Mauritius could be seen as its native name as the Dutch were actually the first to settle the island, though not very well. They could be seen as the island's native inhabitants. I guess we should probably have asked the Dodos what they called the island, but we kind of killed them all before we got the chance to. Though despite giving the island a bit of a too direct name, French has maintained a strong presence on the island. While the nation has no official language, French as well as English is widely spoken there. In French, the island is called Molise. On top of this, a native Creole language has emerged here thanks to the diverse group of people who have lived here, and it's heavily based on French. In the Mauritian Creole, the nation is simply called Molise. Something I've also failed to mention thus far is that the nation of Mauritius is made up of way more than just a single island of Mauritius. A couple smaller islands are part of this nation too. They are called Rodriguez, Agaliga, and St. Brandon. Rodriguez is named after the Portuguese explorer Diogo Rodriguez, who was the first European to set foot on the island. Agaliga's name isn't too clear to us, but is thought to be of Spanish or Portuguese origin, possibly coming from the name of a ship, the Spanish region of Galicia, or the strong gales of the island. And likewise, St. Brandon may be named after St. Brendan, though may even come with the Portuguese baixo, meaning low slash shallow. Nevertheless, even the names of these islands reflect this island nation's interesting history. Mauritius was suggested by Ekmo Sukarno, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as name explains patron saint of Mauritius. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a name explained video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just $1 a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a name explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad-free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.